Are you feeling a bit behind when it comes to staying up with all things AI? Well, if so, this is a great episode for you to plug into. I'm bringing in Kathy McPhillips from the Marketing AI Institute, and she shares all the different educational resources that they have available to you, whether you're just getting started with AI or maybe not even started with AI, or you're looking to take things to the next level. Let's do this. Welcome to Content Marketing Engineered, your source for building trust and generating demand with technical content. Here is your host, Wendy Covey. Hi, and welcome to Content Marketing Engineered. On each episode, I'll break down an industry trend, challenge, or best practice in reaching technical audiences. You'll meet colleagues, friends, and clients of mine who will stop by to share their stories. And I hope that you leave each episode feeling inspired and ready to take action. Before we jump in, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my agency, True Marketing. True is a full service agency located in beautiful Austin, Texas, serving highly technical companies. For more information, visit truemarketing.com. And now on with our podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Content Marketing Engineered. I'm joined today by Kathy McPhillips. She is the chief growth officer for the Marketing AI Institute. Welcome to the show, Miss Kathy. How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. You I too. We were what together in Cleveland uh, some months ago at uh, the CEX event. Yep. And uh, yeah, what have you been up to this summer? Well, we were in Ireland in May, which I think you knew. We, we went away for a few weeks. So the rest of the summer has been like re replenishing our bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and just taking little odd trips here and there, but mostly getting ready for our big event, which I know we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Well, so worth it to drain that account to go to Ireland, I'm sure. No regrets. Oh, my gosh. I can't even tell you. It was just the best thing in the whole entire world. Yeah. Every day we're like, let's move. <laughs> oh, I always do that on trips. I'm surprised I'm not living in Costa Rica right now, but alas. Yes, here we are. And here we are. <laughs> Well, Kathy, I, I know a bit about this, but our listeners may not know about your career journey because you've, uh, you've worked at some interesting places and, and some places people may be very familiar with uh, before landing at the Marketing AI Institute. So give us a scoop. I don't know how exciting it is, but it's been fun. It's been, you know, I've been having a good time. So I started, I've been in Cleveland my whole entire life. I worked for, uh, right out of college, I worked at Liggett Stash Hour, which unfortunately is no, long, no longer um, an agency. They closed their doors um, a, while, a little while ago. And then I moved over to Wise Advertising in Cleveland. I really wanted to be in media planning. My favorite professor at OU was a former media planner at Kraft. And I started at Liggett and I was in the studio because I just needed a job. And it turns out I really loved it, but I'm like, my heart's really in the math and the science side of it. So went over to WISE and then just family stuff happened and I started my own business and did that for about 13 years. And then in the midst of all that, um, so my clients at the agent at WISE Advertising, my biggest client was Applebee's and I just loved the restaurant marketing sector. I loved the excitement. I loved, you know, just the number crunching. There was, it was franchise. So there was all this stuff we were working on. Um, trying to make franchisees happy and as well as corporate. And then I got in this restaurant niche. So Tony Roma's Kona Grill, Texas Land and Cattle, Lone Star Steakhouse, like all these big restaurants. Yeah. And then um, through that, I kind of got in the nonprofit world, which I loved. And then, so I had these clients and then I met Joe Polizzi on Twitter. Um, and then I was like talking to him and I'm like, wait, I think he goes to my church. So I Googled him and he was like, he wrote our church bulletin every Sunday. So I, he, we just started talking a little more and then he reached out to me and he said, Hey, we're looking for someone to work in marketing, come work for us. And, and so that, you know, how that went, so that was nine years. And then same thing. I met Paul Reitzer, who I'm working for now through Joe and through content marketing Institute and content marketing world. And in 2021, Paul and I were at breakfast and we're like, Hey, let's do something. So I've been with, with Paul since May of 2021. So you have really, whether you realize it or not, touched so many marketers' lives through your time at Content Marketing Institute and now what you're doing with the Marketing AI Institute. So to me, I think that's so cool that what you've done, and I guess really Applebee's, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> you've been in my head for a while, Kathy McPhillips. Yes. Well, the nice thing about you know coming to the Institute now, Marketing AI Institute, 
is that I can go back to all my content marketing people and say like, you guys, if I'm doing this, you know, we're, if you can be doing this too. So it really has brought a whole new lens of I'm one of you. I'm coming into this world, not blind, but kind of, I'm trying to learn all these things. And if I'm implementing them and having success with them, I really think you can too. Yeah, that's great. Um, so amongst the marketers in manufacturing and engineering, I hear a lot of times of, oh, I don't, I don't have time to stop and go to conferences or I, I don't know where to go get education. And I'm just like, I beside myself <laughs> because to me, you know, it, the landscape keeps changing more and more quickly. And, and to me, it's just so important for marketers to get training and, and for their own careers and, and just to be good professionals, right? To do the right thing, uh, whether it's for your clients on the agency side or, or the company that you work for. You know, with that in mind, tell me about the Marketing AI Institute. Like, why does it exist? Who is it for? How did it get started? Like all the good scoop, because I think a lot of industrial marketers out there don't even know it exists and we need to fix that today. We definitely need to fix that today. So the Marketing AI Institute, our mission is to make AI approachable, accessible, actionable for marketers, really focusing on AI literacy for all. How can we get folks to understand what AI is, how it can impact their business, how it can make their lives more meaningful, happy, which sounds really silly, but actually it's true. It can take a lot of things. It can help us focus on the things we really love doing. So through the Institute, we are um, a media event and education company. So the media side is blogs, white papers, podcasts, research, all the media company stuff. Um, of education, we've got some online courses and then events. We do some virtual events every year. And then our flagship Macon Marketing AI Conference, which happens once a year. And I think the best place that I tell people to start is we have an intro to AI class that Paul does and I'm on with him. And we have, we're, we're at like 40-ish right now. We've done this since November of 2021. And the intro to AI class I love it every time because it's evolved so much. So 2021, you know, it was a different AI was a different beast yeah. back then, you know, so much has changed, but even going from episode 35 to 36, you know, time, it was like, okay, things have even changed the past few weeks. So Paul's constantly updating that presentation and it really gives folks a good sense of what is AI? Why do I need to be paying attention? How can I get started? To, you know, to, again, to, to that fear factor of, you know, it doesn't need to be this big overarching, let's overhaul our entire business. Like, let's find some meaningful places that we can see an impact. So that's a great place I suggest people start. start. But to go even back even further, the Institute started in 2016, which is, which is crazy. You it know, when, so I, I remember it's when so Paul crazy. was talking about it back then and we're kind of like, what's he talking about? You know, and I was one of those, not skeptics, because, I mean, if you know Paul, you know he's ahead and he's you know seeing the seeing the things coming down and if you listen to the podcast now you're like how can how did he just predict that that's going to happen next week mm -hmm. um but he saw how ai might impact his agency a lot of the you know rfps and reporting and analytics and a lot of the things he's like gosh ai might really have a great place for us in our business how can we become an ai forward agency and be able to do even more for our clients do more for our business development whatever it was and that that turned from a blog to a series to a company to an arm of the institute to an entire or arm of his agency to an entirely new business. So he sold his agency in 2021, and you know now we're full time marketing AI institute and very busy trying to keep up as quickly as you can. And I appreciate just what goes into that and just the heart um, behind that, because it would be easy probably to take that beginner course and say, no, nah, you know, and let's leave it a little vague here so we don't have to touch it all the time. But instead, it's hyper specific to exactly how to do things right now. And that's something that struck me about all of your education um, products, the, the podcast itself, too, is just I, I know that anything that you guys are putting out there is not dated. It's exactly, you know, in response to what's happening right now. And that's why I really like the podcast. And I don't want to get too in the weeds on all the products we have, but as a marketer who's been doing this for a really long time, it's like, I can't keep up with all of this stuff. I have, and I have a job. I have to get my job, you know, get done. I have goals I need to meet. 
and I need to kind of understand what's going on in this world of AI. So my favorite thing is to listen to the podcast because I'm like, I'll let Mike and Paul do all the digging on what I need to be paying attention to and then synthesize it for me and tell me in one hour what I need to be paying attention to. So I have that. I've got a few other places I you know touch every single day to make sure I'm keeping up on things. But then I just kind of shut that out, put it aside and say, okay, let's get to work, which has been really nice. Yeah, I, I I like the podcast. The podcast I noticed the name marketing is no longer a, a part of it. What what was the reason? Yeah, that? um, you know, the more they were talking about some of these topics, the more it was like, okay, these are impacting business leaders and businesses as a whole, not just the marketing department, the marketing leader, the marketing team. Yeah. So I think we just wanted to take that out of there and say, this is all of you in business can can learn from this, and we want to make sure that it's applicable to all you're doing. Yeah. marketers included. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think it was a smart move. It seems like from the beginning, really, it was broader than marketing, uh, but but certainly had our, our takeaways. Every episode, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. I need to change my investment strategy over to <laughs> right. the person. You know, I need to log on to Fidelity, do some stock trading, and then I need to do this other thing here for the agency. So yeah, uh, pretty good. Well, so so we're in the midst of planning Maycon. Uh, what are the dates? Are. September 10th through the 12th here in Cleveland, Ohio. And okay. the 10th, we have got a workshop day. And the 11th and 12th are the main conference. Great. So that is right around the corner. And it's right around the corner. I attended last year. And last year was what, the second or the third year you did? Last year was the fourth. It was the fourth? Oh, my so God. So this is our fifth. So late. So late to the game. Uh, and, and every year it seems like you're just doubling the number of attendees as momentum continues to build, you know, and, and more and more people are interested. Yeah. Well, 20, 2019 was the first, and I went with Joe Polizzi as an attendee, as a paid attendee. And I left there thinking like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. We should start doing something and then we went back to work and, you know, and it wasn't where it is now. There's so many things we're doing now and I'm so excited. Our expo hall is like 20 vendors, 20 amazing tech companies. And it's just like people are coming in there ready to take action, have a use case, say, I'm ready to get started on this or I'm ready to, you know, continue because a lot of people that will be there have been doing this for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, then the 2020, we don't talk about 2020, 2021 was virtual, 2020. Two and twenty three were in person, so we went from like two fifty to three hundred the first three years. Last year we at, we were at seven hundred, and this year we're expecting between twelve and fifteen hundred. Wow! Congratulations. Thanks. Um, yeah. It, it, the programming A lot of work. <laughs> was was spot on. However, one of my favorite things of last year was sitting at lunch, just plopping down at a table with people I didn't know, and everyone trading ideas of here's how I'm using AI, here are mistakes I've made, and really hearing just firsthand stories. And so you have you know the presenters that do like the ideation and the big mm -hmm. ideas or whatever, but just kind of getting that grassroots feedback of of what's happening like on the streets, if you will. Yeah. And that's my favorite part. Like our community is just, the speakers are incredible. You know, Paul and Tracy work on that agenda. It's like curated so well. It is down to, we want, here's our goals for what we want the attendees to take away. Here are some hot topics. And there are some, some sessions that, you know, were filled at the very last minute, but Paul's like, I need the right person for this spot. So it's mm -hmm. very, very well thought out. But again, you know, the community that we've built, is just everyone, there's no ego. No one's saying I'm the best at this. It's like, I have, oh my gosh, I just tried this thing and I want to share it with all of you. Like, that's what's so awesome. And like you said, at lunch, those, those are the things that come up at the opening party. People meet someone at the opening party and then they're, you know, glued to the hip for the next two days. So it's just really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be afraid to go solo people that are listening because you'll, you'll find other people. Oh my gosh. I'll find you a person. Yeah, I'm exactly. really good at making those connections. Yeah. You two get together. <laughs> Well, what are some of um, the themes or focus points that you guys, as um, whether it's Macon or just as the Marketing AI Institute as a whole, what are some of the big initiatives or, or themes that y'all are focused on? Well, so this year's theme for Macon is Accelerate, you know, accelerating your adoption, accelerating your strategy, accelerating, you know, we wrote this list of all these different words what, that AI can help accelerate. So the sessions are really focused on if you've already started, Awesome. Let's get let's get you moving even faster. Gain your competitive advantage. Start scaling faster in your organization. If you haven't gotten started, 
Now's a great time. You know, we said for a long time, you know, if you're talking about it, you're not behind yet. And I feel like we're kind of getting to that point that if you haven't started yet, you might be getting a little behind. So we want to make sure people have the resources and tools and education that they need to get started. And I think that's, we don't say that Accelerate is our company's mission, but also it kind of is. We want to make sure, we want to give people everything they need to enable them to do this themselves, to find the right agency partners, to get started. And then one thing I love, I really truly think manufacturing is at such, I think there's such a great industry for this because I think more than others, I'm general, generalizing, I think they're more precise. They've got systems in place. They're more prepared for this type of thing than a lot of other industries. So I love manufacturing. You know, I, one of my first clients at Wise was in manufacturing and I loved the precision of it. And I think that, you know, I think it just lends itself well for to this AI world. It, it does. And also, um, you know, some of the pitfalls that people uh, see, you know, the abuse, if you will, of generative AI, for example, where you're just, you know, uh, not having the human involved, not having that oversight, can't get away with that in, in a technical company. No. I, <laughs> you know, in many cases, uh, what we're writing about doesn't exist out in the world, or if it does exist, it's maybe from our company and one other. So uh, we've seen a lot of use cases that are very unique for our industry that, that maybe start with the general use case, but then really have to be applied in a, in a careful manner. I don't know if you know this, but my daughter is in an agency here in Cleveland and when she has two clients in manufacturing and the ways that she's using AI, I'm just like, yay, you know, and cool. very minimally at this point, yeah. but she's doing a lot of interviews with subject matter experts. How can she take, how can she learn more about, I don't even know what products they are. I mean, I do, but I'll, I won't, I don't know if there's privacy issues, but she's like, I don't know, I don't understand this. So she's going to find some articles and she's throwing those articles into one of these tools and saying, help me better understand this. I am, I'm going to be, I'm interviewing a subject matter expert. I need to, you know, here's our goal. Here's what we're trying to achieve. Help me draft some questions. Help me do this. Help me transcribe this recording so I can then create the post, whatever she is doing with it. Yeah. And it, it's just simple things like that. It's like, that's AI. You know, yeah. how can you, how can you incorporate that into your systems and workflows that you are, you're doing anyways? You know, yeah, that's a great use, use case and one that we do as well. In fact, I just uh, recorded an episode with two of my writers walking through how they apply it across the writing process. And yep. very much that was one of the use, use cases. So a lot of use up front in that research, competitive analysis, ideation. So great. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And we don't actually use it a lot to actually write. You know, we all are journalism majors, marketing, uh, Paul, Mike's a former editor. Like we don't use it. Like that's the, that's the stuff we like doing. Yeah. You know, we'd rather focus on some of the other opportunities where AI can assist us so we can really, you know, use our voice and our writing skills. Yeah. Great. Well, for marketers that are listening to this and they're like, oh, I just... I don't know, Kathy, I feel behind. I don't know if I'm ready like to throw myself in a Macon. So there's beginner information there too. Like if someone's just yes, so you're nodding yes. So kind of you see the gamut at this event. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And maybe that intro course is another thing to go look at if people feel behind. Um, yeah, there's an intro course. You know, that's a free one we do every every month. Paul and Mike wrote a book. I think you can get it on Amazon right now for $16 ish. And our website, if you're in AI and advertising, AI and content marketing, AI and personalization, we have these blueprints on our website that could help you get started. We have so much free stuff on the website. We've got a few virtual events that are free to low cost. Um, you know, the event obviously would be wonderful. I'd love to see anybody there. And um, what else? I mean, and we've got an amazing Slack group. And again, you know, it's one of those things that we're in there every single day talking to people, trying to facilitate discussions. But if we went away for a week and didn't post anything, it would go on without us. And that's the great thing about community because someone would, would jump in and say, oh, you know, you might not even notice we weren't there. Hopefully they'd miss us. But, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of great places just for free knowledge sharing in, within that group. Um, but then there are other places to get started. Um, but I think you know, I would just say to people, the way that I started was finding a particular use case, finding a problem that we needed to solve. And for me, it was our podcast. Paul said, you know, we're starting the podcast back up. And I was like, great. And I said, who's going to produce it? And he said, you. And I was like, oh, awesome. I don't know what I'm doing. 
So I found these tools to help me. And now I'm going in, on the road talking about podcast production, which is absurd that I'm talking about this topic, but I've got a story to tell because I'm using all of these AI tools to help me produce this podcast. And one of the big things is it's such a, if we don't turn it, since it's news-based, we need to get that thing out like immediately. And we using these tools, we can get it out fast. And, you know, I have since passed this, this process on to Claire on my team, but just, it, you know, really has helped us from fill a knowledge gap, fill a skill gap, fill, you know, a speed, to, you know, a sensitivity, all of these different things where AI has helped us. And that's just one little thing, but it's paid dividends for our company. It, it's a big thing. And, and, you know, we moved our podcast over to an AI platform as well. And we're just amazed with the time savings that it, it gave us back. And we had a contractor that was the producer formally, and we were able to just bring it in house. It was easy. It was approachable. It was quick. And I joke that that was my first AI layoff, if you will. And it was my son that was moonlining. To it. <laughs> so it's kind of a terrible story, but it, also an AI success. I have a feeling, you know, we'll, we'll find other, other things. For yeah. Uh, but then there are things, you know, we needed, Paul has been speaking a ton and he wanted us to put together a speaker reel. So we asked like, okay, could you do that? And I was like, absolutely not. Like there are professionals, you know, I can edit a podcast I can, you know, fix the sound. I can do some of those things, but to make you a speaker reel, no, we need the pros. So is this giving those folks the opportunity to do more of the meaningful, the bigger things that they like and not doing all these little things like, Hey, can you fix my podcast for me? Yes. You know, you take so, awkward pauses. Or, yes. No, yes. Uh, you don't need a, a person to necessarily do that to that level. Um, and you know, maybe someone does it at a Joe Rogan or depending, I don't know, maybe there's a threshold where you need to be more hands-on, but right. I, I hear you. Good. Um, well, you mentioned a lot of resources on your website. What is your website, Kathy? It is marketing institute.com and the Macon you can get to from the main site, but it's just Macon M A I C O N dot A I. Great. And if people want to connect with you, where can they find you? I'm on LinkedIn every single day. You can find me there. Um, you can, if you on our, if you're on our website and you see the little pop up and you want to chat with me on the website, um, but really LinkedIn is probably the best. And we're hopefully I'll see you in Cleveland in September. Sounds good. Well, thanks for stopping by, Kathy. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me today on Content Marketing Engineered. For show notes, including links to resources, visit truemarketing.com/podcast. While there, you can subscribe to our blog and our newsletter and order a copy of my book, Content Marketing Engineer. Also, I would love your reviews on this podcast. So please, when you get a chance, subscribe and leave me your review on your favorite podcast subscription platform. Thanks and have a great day.